Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtic Warband here, and welcome back to another battle in Napoleonic Total War 3. In today's battle, the Russian army is marching west to rendezvous with the retreating Austrian forces. But as the Russians reached a small town 30 miles from the Austrian lines, grave news reached them. Napoleon had outwitted the Austrians, marching his army through the night to cut the Russians off. Now, French forces were between the beleaguered Austrians and the reinforcing Russians. The Russians would have to break Napoleon here if they had any hope of saving their allies from certain death. Alright guys, welcome to the battlefield, and we have the Russian forces moving steadily across the battlefield towards a small town. Now, Russian scouts had reported seeing a large French presence in the area of the town, but were not able to locate their entrenched positions or their fielded numbers. With so many unknowns before him, the Russian general has wisely decided to split his army into several wings to avoid being encircled or outflanked, and he has sent his cavalry far on ahead to probe the tree line, hoping to uproot the hidden French forces. So let's go ahead and zoom out and kind of see where all of the Russians are. So you can see that we've got three Three separate infantry wings uh, wings here with uh, much line infantry. We've got a lot of musketeers. I believe there's five units there. We've got uh, six units here, possibly seven. We've got the artillery moving forwards, and then we've got a very large wing here of uh, another eight units of musketeers. And then traveling along the road, we have a few stragglers, a couple of musketeer units, and I believe some uh, light infantry that are way on up ahead. And they're moving a lot faster, again, using these roads to their advantage. But we do have a couple units of cavalry that are probing the tree line, as I said, trying to uproot those French defenses in the trees around the town. We've got this cavalry set up here, but oh my goodness, we just uncovered the French artillery. There it is. It's an eight-pounder, I believe, that has begun to fire at this Russian cavalry. So he's going to try and get them off the road and to a safe position. Meanwhile, over here, you can see that this cavalry is starting to see where the French infantry is lined up. We've actually got several ambush points here set up along the road. You can see we've got some French infantry just at the edge of the trees there. And I believe that now we've got the French cavalry actually exploding from this tree line. And I don't know if Tattoos and Welding playing as the Russians has noticed this or not. But Total War player is going to go ahead and charge in with his French cavalry and try and break the Russian cavalry here. And he was very successful with that, driving the Russian cavalry away without much trouble. Now, I've got all of the uh, flags uh, turned off for this battle, so hopefully it won't be too confusing for you. But I just love the actual cinematics of it, and I'll be able to tell you which forces are what. And it's a 1v1 as well, so it's not going to be very confusing. I have a large 4v4 Napoleonic Total War 3 battle that I hope to get out next week. And uh, that one I'll definitely have the faction flags on because that's going to be much more difficult to keep track of uh, whose units are what. But for now, in this 1v1, I think it's uh, perfectly acceptable to just enjoy the cinematics of Napoleonic Total War 3. For such an old game, it definitely looks beautiful, especially when you turn on the depth of field and get those unit cards up to max. You can just uh, zoom on in here and you can see those beautiful Russian troops marching forwards, flags held high and in the front. But typically in Napoleonic Total War 3, I don't do army comps. I'm sure some of you are wondering where the army comps are. But unfortunately in Napoleonic Total War 3, uh, on replays, you can only see the army of the player who sent you the replay. So as you can see, if we look in the trees here, we can see next to nothing of Total War players' French forces. The only thing that is uncovered is the general, which cannot be hidden. But he is still in the tree line. So I actually have no idea what the French have brought to this battlefield, so it's going to be as much of a surprise to you as it is to me. But Tattoos and Welding, who did send in the replay, says that it's an extremely action-packed and close battle. Now we do have some more uh, cavalry here, and I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce the names of all of these units. I believe that the names are very historical, but uh, I don't know how to speak Russian, and a lot of the French names would escape me as well. Now, uh, these light infantry here, I think I can pronounce these. The Stroki? 
but a very small unit of only 40 men, so hopefully they'll be able to do some work for tattoos. I think he's, again, just using it to try and uh, locate some of these uh, French infantry that are in the town. I believe we do have that artillery piece firing once again, but it is still hidden on the tree line. So we've got a very massive Russian army forming up here. As you can see, we've got a lot of musketeers on the battlefield. So again, Russia drawing from their strengths, which is often numbers, just overwhelming them with the sheer weight of numbers, the amount of men. But we also, it looks like we have the Russian artillery firing down into the tree line. I'm not sure if they're focusing on Napoleon himself, or if they're actually trying to focus on this French cavalry that is charging across the battlefield. Now you can see we've got a unit of Chasse here, and we've got uh, a unit of Cabinier uh, Chevel. But it looks like the Chasse are actually going to go right for the undefended artillery here. And Total War player is actually going to be successful with that. I am shocked that Tattoos was able to allow that to happen. And he, he has broken the artillery crew, but surely they will return to the battlefield. And the Chasse Chevelle, unfortunately, they have broken for Total War player, but I think they will come back as well. We finally got the Russian general bringing up the rear with a couple of his Dragoon units. Very heavy Russian cavalry. Hopefully they will be able to defend that artillery piece a little bit better when it does return. But we've got a lot of French cavalry over here. We've got some Russian cavalry that has uncovered two more units of French cavalry on the opposite side of the town. So we've got some uh, Chasse à Chevelle over here, 64 in the unit, and then 58 of the Cabinier à Chevelle. And I believe the Cabinier... Um, I th uh, I, my French pronunciation, or sorry, my French translation is probably not that accurate, but I think Cabin, Cabin, Cabinier, uh, is that not Gunner Cav? I believe it might be, or like Pistolier Cav? I could be wrong, but I think that, that they'll be able to skirmish, and the uh, Chasse à Chevelle, I believe, is uh, either a Lancer Cavalry or a, a Heavy Cavalry. But how are we looking over here? Did that uh, cavalry return to the battlefield? It did, and it's actually getting some good charges onto the backs of the musketeers. Chaussée Chevelle is running, so they have retreated after getting a bit of a charge there. Tattoos and Welding being harassed a little bit more on his flanks than I think he would have liked. But those two units moving back into position, I probably would have turned this one around to actually fire on this cavalry, because it's kind of stuck inside the tree line now. But I think he's just ignored it for now. Thankfully, we do have the artillery piece back in action, and it looks like it is going to start firing at that cavalry that's sitting on the other side of the battlefield. And Total War player has noticed that, and he's decided to move the cavalry away and back into the trees. And over here, it looks like uh, the Strelke are actually in a perfect position here to fire at this French cavalry. I'm not sure if they're out of range or not. Both players being being quite relaxed in their uh, pace here. Now, it looks like we do have the Dragoons moving into the trees, so they are going after the Chasse à Chevelle, charging into the tree line there, and surely, surely that French cavalry will be cut to pieces by the numerically superior Dragoons of Russia. And there we go. Well done. So Tattoos and Welding removing that nuisance from his flank. Uh, the other Dragoon unit is moving over to the left-hand side. And we've also got a couple units of uh, Musketeers moving forwards here as well. But looks like we still cannot see any of the French... Okay, there we go. So we do see the line of French infantry that we uh, saw earlier. Those two units have come into view. And here we go, defending the town very staunchly. We've got four other units of line infantry for France. And we've got two in reserve blocking the rear road into the town. But I'm hearing some charging going on. So what's going on here? Oh, we've got some musketeers that have formed up. I think they are going to get charged by this cavalry and they don't have square are they even going to get a volley off there we go finally getting a volley off but i think the damage has been done to that russian unit yeah immediately shattering in that charge a lot of them being knocked to the ground and many of them being slain by the french cavalry total war player being extremely annoying but extremely effective with his cavalry we got tattoos and welding moving back in with his heavy cavalry here Charging the uh, Chasse à Chevelle, I believe. Oh, but we had a huge hit 
from the French artillery into the flank of the Russian cavalry. Another hit as well. So Russian units are breaking left and right here. Total War player very staunchly defending this town with his cavalry and his artillery piece. That was such a clutch volley there, actually saving that unit from breaking. And now, unfortunately, this Russian musketeer unit is being cut to pieces. Very, very unfortunate. We've got more Russian units that are moving forward, though. Tattoos and Welding is not slowing down his pace. It looks like that artillery volley got a uh, friendly fire shot on one of the cavalry units. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny, but he literally was uh, just face full of lead and thrown 20 feet across the battlefield. No way, though, is Total War player again going to be able to go and hit this, cav or hit this artillery piece. And it looks like Tattoos is just going to let him do it. He does have his Dragoons close at hand, but this quicker French Cavalry just going in and then getting out. No way. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, it looks like that unit of Musketeers did finally uh, come back to the battlefield. We've got the two units of French Cavalry here still standing. Where are the uh, Russian Dragoons? There was that Dragoon unit. I think they're still... Yeah, they are still in the tree line over here, so that is good. Hearing some more charging going on, but I don't know exactly where it's from. But just look at uh, the Russians here, dividing and conquering. We've got three units of musketeers that are going to move over to this road and push down this flank. We've got four that are headed directly for the tree line itself. We have six units plus the uh, routed unit that has returned also pushing to this side. We've got two moving down the main road. And then we've got another five that are pushing forwards, driving that cavalry back. We've got a six that is trying to catch up. It, it's being held up by the trees there. The general is moving forwards as well. Now, did those dragoons... They are still... Did they finally break the cavalry? They did. Well done. So the Russian dragoons have secured the rear of the Russian lines. And let's take a look at what's going on over here. I think, yep, some routing French cavalry, of course, as they route from the battlefield. I'm sure they are telling Napoleon what the Russian strengths are and their numbers. But it is Napoleon, after all. I'm sure that he already knew the exact strength of the Russian army before he moved to cut it off. Okay, we do have some French units that are moving forwards. They did disappear into the tree line, but they have reappeared. So Total War player is starting to move his armies into position, or his units into position, I should say. And are the Russians going to be able to get an early volley off? Surely they can. And really, Total War player actually limbering up his artillery piece. I would have thought it was a pretty in a pretty good position where it sat. But he's got it all limbered up. I guess uh, he's worried that maybe if the Russians outflank him, he needs to be ready to go. More French forces pushing forward. So we can kind of do an army comp now like we, like we had uh, seen before. So we've got at least uh, three French infantry here. There was another two in behind, so that is five. Uh, we've got six, seven, eight units of line infantry, nine. So he's got a good amount of line infantry and also a good amount of cavalry. I can also flick on the minimap or the radar screen so you guys can see where the French are formed up and the Russians slowly encircling them with their more numerical units. Let's see if he is going to push forwards and get a volley here. And it looks like the French are going to be the ones to get first blood. There we go. Tattoos and Welding needs to line up his horses as quickly as possible. He can't lose men like this unnecessarily. It's actually a zoom in as well, so we can get the full effect. I'll minimize the radar for now as well. There we go. Yes, yes, Russians, go. And immediately smoke fills the air. Oh, and I love the glint of the French muskets there in the trees too. That is awesome to see. Very cool. Come on, boys, another volley. Russians taking a long time to reload there. There we go. So it is underway here. We've got more units that are pushing through the tree line. You can see there are a lot of Russian musketeers. And 
Total War player is going to have to be careful here because these three units could actually get uh, outflanked. But there we go. Okay, so he is sending at least three more French units here to cover his flank. But there is a wide gap in the center. Granted, he could have some units that are hidden in the trees. But let's take a look at what else is going on. Yep, we've got some of the cavalry finally making it to the battlefield. This is a huge risk, though, having all of these uh, musketeers here in range of that cavalry. And I believe that a lot of them cannot form square. There we go, though. The Russian lines beginning their beginning their attack of the town. And what is this here? We've actually got the artillery of Chevelle very close, almost in range of the Russians. So yeah, Total War player needs to move them. I hear some charges though, and yes, this is gonna be so bad. Oh no! Oh, two units of musketeers just destroyed by the French cavalry. No! That is not what you wanted to see. Oh, no. And a third one! Tattoos, what are you doing? Your Dragoons are right here! Get them engaged! Oh, no! Let's zoom into this fight as well here. Look at the chaos that has ensued. We've got the Russian cavalry trying to stabilize the situation, but the French have already done the damage at this point. Oh, my goodness. Three units of infantry just annihilated like that. And the Russian uh, cavalry isn't looking too hot either. You can see Tattoos is quickly rushing his other unit of Dragoons over to that side of the battlefield. Now, how are things going over here? Oh, I love these cinematics. Napoleonic Total War Three. Such an epic, epic mod for Napoleon. I'm trying to get a good shot for you guys where you can see almost all of them firing on the, the French positions here. So yeah, we do have the Russians pushing really hard on the French flanks. You can see that this unit is really starting to suffer being fired on from the front and also the side. Let's quickly run over here and take a look at how things are going in the center where most of the Russian infantry has been broken. No way. Oh my goodness. Look at what has happened here. Okay, we do have some Russians that are returning, but this is very bad for tattoos. Very bad. Oh my goodness, we do have the Dragoons trying to stabilize the situation, but we've got routing here. Another unit that's routing. We've got uh, this unit routing. 115 left. This one, 113 is routing. And of course, we've got this one with 30 men that's routing. This one with 70 that's routing. And another one over here with 73. So that's a good six units that have been broken from the battlefield. Wow, wow, wow. And more French cavalry in the tree line here. How many of the Russian units do we have on this battlefield still left? There is a substantial amount of them in this uh, main forested area, though. So that is definitely good for tattoos. However, you can see now that the French troops that were fighting the main infantry in the field outside the town are now firing at the flanks of these other units. Oh boy, oh boy. Hopefully these units will return to the battlefield. If not, that has freed up at least three units of French infantry here to be able to fire down on the Russians. And Total War player actually making a tactical retreat here. I think that is the best decision for him to make. He was just going to lose these three units otherwise. However, we think that the Russians have lost a lot of men. But just look at this battle line that they have forming already. Completely surrounding the flank of the French. Let's actually zoom down and actually get a nice shot of that with the French flag in there as well. Giving you guys the best cinematics I can for this Napoleon battle.
very close quarters fighting as well. Let's zoom out and just take a look at the minimap here. I'm going to turn it on so you guys can actually see what is going on. Let me know in the comments down below too if you think that having the floating flags over top doesn't really affect the cinematic aspect of it. I'll uh, definitely think about adding them in for future videos. I just think it ruins the immersion a little bit, especially in Napoleonic Total War 3. In Napoleon Vanilla, it's not that big of a worry for me. It doesn't matter to me too much. But in Napoleonic Total War 3, I just, I just really love it without... But you guys are the ones that are watching my videos, not me. So if you find that it's too confusing, just let me know and I will definitely add them in for future Napoleonic Total War 3 videos. But yeah, you can definitely see where the French are holding at this point. And uh, yeah, a lot of these units that are routing here, I guess they're not returning to the battlefield, which is really unfortunate. Thankfully, this one did return with 115. So we've got uh, we've got basically three units. This unit with 94 has broken from the battlefield. The French have effectively been pushed almost out of the forest completely. And this is the battle line that has formed here. So we've got a very massive Russian force. We've also got some units that are pushing uh, along the flank in the forest, maybe to fire at the, uh, the flank of the French line infantry. And do we have some units that are routing over here? Yes, we do. So, uh, man, the elite French. Yeah, we've got two units just really hammering down on the Russian flank. Another huge route here in the center as well. If we make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see, that is the entire right flank of the Russians is completely gone. And that allows a lot of the French that were originally fighting to protect that town to be able to push into the forest. So, yeah... Things are just not looking very good for tattoos and welding at this point. He's lost his artillery early on. His cavalry has been all but destroyed. I think he has one unit left. And now he's basically just down to the, the core of the Russian military, the, the Russian musketeers. Let's get some zoom-ins there for you guys. There we are. Yes, 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 Russians. Nice volleys. Let's zip over to this side as well. Come out of the tree line a little bit so you guys can have a better view. Let's zoom in there so you guys can see. You can even see in the distance. We've actually got, I believe that is Napoleon Bonaparte, very closely monitoring what is happening on the battlefield. Oh no, and the Russian flag bearer has been cut down on this right unit here. But the French flag bearers are cut down as well. They are susceptible to being killed, being in the front lines like that. You can see, yeah, this one has lost its flag bearer. But look at tattoos. This is this is what's going to maybe save him. Oh, and you know what? Oh, if I was him, I'd definitely be thinking about volleying Napoleon Bonaparte at this point, And I think that's what he was doing. That has got Total War players' attention, though, about this flank, and he is just redeploying his French forces once again. His, his troops are so elite compared to the Russians that he can comfortably do tactical withdrawals like this without worrying too much about uh, men lost. And, of course, he can always fall back to this uh, main building as well, the farmhouse. He can put a couple of units in there. Uh, he's also very smartly set up his artillery piece here. He should be able to get some really choice volleys on the Russian lines from this position. Very, very nice. But the Russians are slowly, slowly closing the jaws here on the, the French. Keep volleying, boys. Keep volleying. You have to save the Austrian army. The French forces defeating the Austrians repeatedly on the Austrian-French border. The Austrians trying to retreat to the Russian territory to regroup. And of course, Napoleon knows exactly that they wanted to do this. And has cut off the Russian retreat. Or, sorry, the uh, Russian reinforcements. What do we have over here? Is this the uh, Russian general? It is Levin von Bedingsen. Oh, and look at the... Uh, you can even see the uh, dust. And it uh, looks like we do have some flashes from that building. So I wonder if they have put 
some French units in that building. We'll take a look at that in a second. Yes, yes, yes. Hold, men, hold! Many of the men out on fire at will at this point. Now, are there any Russians that have come back? It doesn't look like it. So all of these can, can just be put from our minds. All of them have abandoned the cause and have headed on home. It's weird, too. They're kind of doing, like, this little carousel thing. If we turn on the uh, minimap, you can see that now they're facing almost north-south, whereas before they were facing, uh, they were facing, like, uh, uh, east-west. And now the Russians are almost behind the French, whereas the Russians used to be on this side, and now they're actually on the other side, pushing the French back towards the town. Very interesting. Zoom in here. French standard holding strong. Come on, boys, keep volleying! Nice job. Let's take a look from the Russian standpoint as well. Getting a good down the line. There we go. There we go. Well done. I love these line battles. So how are things looking? So we do have some units that have moved into the uh, into this uh, farmhouse. Looks like he is sending at least uh, two units in. We've got uh, 37 of the 38E division moving in. And we've got 24 of another 38 division. So yeah, he is trying to hold there. Unfortunately, I guess Total War player isn't able to get good shots off uh, with his artillery. But here comes the Russian wave. Oh, man. The manpower just moving on in. Unfortunately, Tattoos could have had his artillery to destroy that farmhouse. But he has decided... Or, sorry, uh, the Total War player has decided... Uh, that they were not going to be able to have access to that artillery, so now he can comfortably sit in that house. But looks like we do have the Russians moving right into the artillery and immediately breaking. Oh no! Russians being cut down by the French there just outside the farmhouse. That was a daring charge, but it didn't pay. 91 men breaking from the battlefield. So I believe this is all that the French have, if we take a look at it. I mean, it's a lot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units. And the Russians have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve units. So, uh, oh, but I didn't count the uh, units that are in this farmhouse. So it is a very even battle, even still. Very even battle. Yeah, you can see the flashes from the uh, farmhouse there. Looks like uh, the Russian units are in range of that building. So that's going to be very difficult to uproot. He's going to have to probably charge a few units in there to break them. And it looks like the uh, French Total War player moving his French units out of the way, uh, hoping that maybe his artillery will be able to use some canister shot and get point-blank fire. But we actually have a sneaky charge here from the French infantry. On Tattoo's left-hand flank, what is this unit that we have charging in? The 38, the 38E. That was a very daring charge, but a very foolish one. Yeah, the Russians definitely getting some retribution there for the fall of all of their comrades on this battlefield. A very daring charge by Total War player, but unfortunately an unsuccessful one. Let's quickly look in the forest here at this uh, forest fight. To be honest, I think this is going a lot slower than both players would have envisioned. I believe that a lot of the shots are actually being blocked by the very thick foliage here. I can't imagine many of the musket shots are meeting their mark here. Lead bullets bouncing off trees could be causing some friendly fire as well, who knows. There we go, yep. Good volleys, boys, good volleys. So you guys can comment down below who you want to win. You have to pause the video though, don't watch till the end and then decide. Are you rooting for Napoleon and his French forces to break the Russians and then effectively surround the Austrians and destroy them as well? 
Or are you hoping that the Russians will be able to break the French here and possibly kill Napoleon and save the Austrians from an almost certain death? We have some more French units charging in. We do, and they're actually breaking the Russian units. Wow. There we go. More French units charging on in into melee against the Russians. Wow. Huge dust. Move oh, wow. They actually broke the Russians. Uh, this is a bit of a problem for tattoos and welding. He needs to kind of lock this down. Get one or two other units over here because getting hit in the flanks... Yeah, they are, they are not looking too good. Hold, men, hold! There we go. Yep, yeah, more Russians being committed to the fight here. Well done, well done. A very bloody melee ensuing here. I think the French are becoming a little bit desperate. They do see that the Russians outnumber them and they need to start breaking some units. Another unit of musketeers, 113 remaining are broken. However, the 28E and the 8E have broken as well. Let's turn on the minimap so you can see how many units are still remaining if we zoom this out. So yeah, we can see that there's about five to six French units remaining and about maybe seven of the Russian units remaining. Still a very close battle. Again, okay, so the French have completely abandoned the forest altogether. And they've got four units of infantry here. Their artillery and Napoleon. And they have nothing left in that farmhouse. They're just down to those four units. Taking a look at the Russians, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now the Russians outnumber them two to one, essentially. But just look at the dead from this melee here. A lot of dead Russians and a lot of dead French. I really enjoy these 1v1 battles as well, guys. I know a lot of uh, YouTubers don't upload 1v1s uh, just because they're, they're not as a grand of a scale, but I actually enjoy them because it allows me to see uh, pretty much everything that has happened in that battle. Whereas if it's a 4v4, you know, it's, it's hard to catch every little thing. And you do end up missing uh, some good cavalry charges or some, some melee uh, units charging into melee and whatnot. Yeah, so I do have a few other one to, uh, 1v1s to cover. I think a Total War player did send me another one that I will be covering. But uh, I have another, as I said, big 4v4 battle that I will be uploading uh, hopefully next week. That is the plan. And the French are retreating here, closing in their ranks. They're, they're just going to be defending, I guess, the farmhouse. Uh, we do have a unit that has moved into the town. Or are they hidden? They must be hidden, because we can't see them. How has this artillery not been firing? I wonder if it's glitched out or something, like it's caught on the... Uh, yeah, I think it must be caught on the, the farmhouse, because it's not unlimbered, so that's probably why he's not able to fire. That makes sense. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He definitely could have broken some more units here if he had access to that, uh, to that artillery piece. Oh, very unfortunate for him. Last resistance here. Where's the other Russian units? Okay, they are coming forwards. They're just really slow because they were uh, in the forested area there. There we go. Let's get kind of the... Yeah, there we go. So now the unit that was inside the farmhouse has come out. And it looks like the Russians are going to be able to take this victory. But very, very close. Oh, and we do have this one that has uh, come back from routing. Oh, look at this. Total War player actually uh, bringing his units around through here. That's how he's always flanking Tattoo. We, yeah, Tattoo knew exactly what was happening here. The 44E uh, setting up with the 103E. 81 and 56 remaining, but Tattoo was well aware of this, and he's got a unit of musketeers 
volleying them as they try to push into the forest. Uh, they haven't broken, though. They are they are still present on the battlefield. But man, I just feel bad for, for the remaining French here. Just pushed up against that farmhouse with no other place to go. Let's actually take a look from the uh, French point of view, what, what they're having to deal with. Hearing some melee charges. Oh, okay, let's let's actually see this first. Them breaking out of the covered forest, or the for cover of the forest, I should say. Fighting the musketeers. Are they going to be able to push through? Okay, one of the Russian units was wavering, but another unit has been pushed in to stabilize. And we've got the 44E broken, and is this the, is this the 103rd? It is not broken. And it is moving behind enemy lines here. We've also got uh, the general here. So, looks like Total War player could be trying to get into range of Levin von Benningsen. And Napoleon is still alive. He is still defending here. Oh, we've got two units over here. Oh, very interesting. And where is Napoleon? Where is Napoleon? That's not him. Was he killed? He may actually have been killed on the battlefield. If we zoom this out. Yeah, he would have been here, so he must have been shot down. But surely we would have got a, a message saying that he was dead. No. Oh, no, he, is this him here? Yes. Okay, good. I did not want to miss the demise of Napoleon Bonaparte. Yes, yeah, so there he is right at the front lines, just probably... Hands in his, uh, hands in his face, just, or face in his hands, I should say, like, how is this possible? How could the Russians have bested my elite French units? This doesn't make any sense. But just the sheer numbers has pushed back and attained a victory. Or an almost assured victory. Wow, uh, 11 von Benningsen down to 8 men out of 16. So... Tattoos and welding really has to be careful there. I'm surprised that this uh, artillery unit hasn't broken. But, oh, the French is getting destroyed here. Just watch some of this here. I know I'm talking a lot, but if we, I just have a lot to say about this battle. You can even see in the distance the Russians firing on their French comrades pretty much back to back outside this farmhouse. And is that them broken? Yes, it is. That is them broken. And I'm sure that uh, the artillery is going to break soon. We've got uh, this unit that is moving over to here. Hat hats off to Total War player, just not giving up until the very end. He is going out fighting, and I'm getting nervous. Where where did Napoleon go? Where's Napoleon? He's escaped. Is he in melee? Did he charge in over here? Ah! Okay, no, he's over here. I want to keep an eye on him. I want to see what happens. I, I haven't seen the ending of this battle, uh, so I'm very curious to see what Napoleon does. Tattoos and welding not really noticing the general moving in behind like that. But there's no way, even even if Napoleon does manage to kill the general or get a solid charge here, there's no way he's going to be able to break uh, break all, all the rest of the units, I don't think. Oh, we've actually got Bennings in. He is the one who's going in against Napoleon here. And there we go. So you can see Bennings in there with the green the green uh, Curious. He's the one not wearing a... Uh, a hat and there is Napoleon as well he's right there oh he just got killed he got killed by Benningson no way oh that surely is the nail in the coffin there that will see off the rest of the French forces without a doubt and there we go and as I said definitely the quantity versus quality 3400 Russians on the battlefield versus 1756 so a very small elite force but total war player doing excellent with that cavalry taking out the artillery early on pretty much removing all of tattoos cavalry and then fracturing 
the mainline infantry that was moving towards the town there. Well done, well done. Tattoos and welding, though, just managing to hold on. Really good play with uh, from him as well, killing that general and also just kind of kiting around the French. Not charging head in, but using the trees to his advantage and uh, slowly pushing the French further and further. Uh, or sorry, I should say closer and closer to that town center, that farmhouse. But yeah, only 12 kills from that artillery taken out early on. Uh, Dragoons, one of them getting 72 kills, which is pretty good. But yeah, the other two cavalry units. Actually, the other three cavalry units, not that good. Uh, Levin von Benningsen, not only did he kill Napoleon, but uh, got 35 other kills as well. Uh, not too high kills on the line infantry. The, that's not too bad with 66, 65, and 99. 149 with this one. Well done, 94. So it was just the sheer amount of line infantry in the end. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I didn't see what happened to the Skrelki uh, unit, but uh, they got destroyed. No kills to their name. But it was just the sheer amount of guns that were being fired, I think, that allowed Tattoo that victory. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I certainly hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. And as always, I will see you in the next one.